Syria's foreign minister says the government in Damascus is ready to talk to its opponent. Walid Abmuallam made the announcement in Moscow during talks with his Russian counterpart. He says President Assad and his allies are open to negotiations, but the opposition is not convinced. In these conditions, the necessity for the Syrian leadership to continue is to stand for the start of dialogue and not allow any provocations to prevail and increase many fold. The opposition coalition has laid out conditions for dialogue, which is not meant to buy time or drag out the crisis. However, the regime rejected the simplest humanitarian issue, releasing the detainees, especially women. We are open to all options towards ending the killing and destruction. And let's join Charlie Angela in Moscow. And Charlie, what else emerged from these talks? Well, these comments were made just before they went in for the talks, and it seems like those talks have finished without any further comments. Now, Muallim didn't set out any conditions uh, for starting this dialogue, but he did thank the Russian administration for the position that they've taken on Syria so far. Now, Russia is a country that has protected Syria from UN Security Council's proposed sanctions, and a country that has continued to supply arms to the Syrian forces throughout this two-year conflict. And Lavrov did say that Russia's stance on Syria remains the same, that the solution is uh, through dialogue and negotiation. But we have seen a little shift in Russia's rhetoric recently, and it started last uh, Wednesday when the Arab-Russian Cooperation Forum here in Moscow came out with that announcement that they were working towards negotiation between the government and os opposition uh, representatives. Now, the Arab League has been putting pressure on Moscow to use its influence in Syria to bring Bashar al-Assad to the negotiating table. And it looks like the foreign minister's announcement today could be the beginning of that. It could be, but it doesn't mean that talks will start, does it? Because uh, the opposition has preconditions. Yes, it does, and they're preconditions that uh, the government is, is, is likely to reject. Those, those conditions include the removal of Assad. Now, um, Walid Moulem himself has said that any negotiation of Assad's uh, position is, is non-negotiable. Um, the other precondition includes, as you heard in that, uh, in that uh, voice from uh, the opposition, was the uh, release of all uh, detainees. The other one is that Syrian troops return to their bases. Now, this announcement has come just uh, a day after the opposition alliance said that it's going to be boycotting the summit for Friends of Syria in Rome next month. And the head of the Syrian opposition, Moaz al-Khatib, said that uh, he hadn't had any contact with Damascus yet about any of these talks. And his visits to Moscow and to the U.S. are still postponed. And he said, as we'll put it, we'll have to wait and see how things develop. But things have been developing slightly in recent weeks. We have seen a softening in the position from the government and the opposition uh, who previously rejected outright any discussion, any proposed talks. And while those preconditions are going to be a hurdle, the other hurdle could be also where these talks could take place if they were to take place. The opposition is saying that they'd like them either abroad or in the rebel-held territory in Syria, while Assad's government says it must be held, any dialogue must be held within uh, territory held by the Syrian forces. So obviously a lot of hurdles, um, but we must remember that uh, the Syrian foreign minister's comments today do show a few signs of progress. All right, Charlie, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much indeed. Charlie Angela reporting from Moscow.